He's uh, been in mountain biking since the very beginning, and that's Gary Fisher who's here with us now. Gary Fisher. Gary Fisher. Gary Fisher, West Coast hippie turned mountain bike business chief. I hear them calling you the fish. Why is that? The fish, just a nickname. Maybe it has to do with my riding style. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have him himself, the godfather of mountain biking, Mr. Gary Fisher. I'm going to start calling him the mayor because he, he keeps talking to everybody. And he's just a, he's an ambassador of mountain biking. It's great to ride with him. Gary Fisher. Yeah. Gary Fisher was a champion bike racer, but back in his early days, he was suspended from bike racing because he refused to follow the rules. Now, it wasn't his equipment or his technique that got him in trouble. Now, Gary Fisher was suspended from bike racing because his hair was too long. When you're an original, you do it your own way. Original Coors. Here's the following the rules. Gary Fisher took the gears from his 10-speed and put them on his rusty old coaster bike. He did this so he could ride over the rocky terrain of Mount Tamalpais. You're probably asking why didn't he just buy a mountain bike? Well, back then, the only mountain bike was the one Gary Fisher had just invented. Expect more from an original. In the early 70s, I was living in Larkspur, and uh, the Larkspur Canyon Gang, uh, these guys would take old beater bikes, you know, something that cost five dollars and uh, take it up to the top of the mountain, hitchhike, push the bike, and really it was, you know, uh, pushing the bike for 80 percent of the time, riding for about 20 percent of the time. And um, uh, I was a road racer at the time, and uh, I worked in a bike shop. I took that old bike and I put the wide range gearing on it, put these little thumb shifters on it, um, put heavy-duty braking on it. You know, that involved motorcycle brake levers and uh, drum brakes. And I did this in 1974 in the space of a couple of months. And all the uh, traditionalists really looked down on that bike. And they thought it was a bad thing. But um, I changed their mind when I was able to ride about 80% of the time. And, uh, you know, only wound up pushing 20% of the time. And <laughs> we're talking here about California clunkers. Clunkers, you see, are, from what we can tell, the newest California phenomenon. Actually began, it seems, up in Marin County. It was a certain attitude that we could do anything we wanted. So it's totally thrilling. It's total exercise. And it's getting away from the cops, the cars, the concrete, and getting out here. Also, I started a company with uh, Charles Kelly in September of 1979. We were looking for an original name. At the time, you know, these old bikes were called clunkers and uh, ballooners and uh, bombers and beaters and that. And I thought of the name mountain bikes uh, for the company. And uh, subsequently, well, it went generic on us. Uh, we weren't uh, into litigation. And we didn't have a very good trademark attorney. In fact, uh, you know, we didn't try very hard. and. Uh, uh, we lost the name. Wow. So you came up with Mountain Bike. Yeah. When Trek uh, bought the Fisher name and took me on as the president of this new uh, subsidiary mm -hmm. of theirs, uh, I was delighted. Uh, these people are honest, truthful, and they're bike freaks. And since then, uh, I've been able to ride the bike a lot more, you know, not deal with the day-to-day -day business so much. What I get to do now is, uh, I think, the most fun, which is go to different spots in the world and ride with people that ride there. 
and uh, learn about them and their culture and their land. You go out on a ride and it strips away all the false fronts and everything, and people learn a lot more about each other. And nature. And nature, yeah. Where do you think the mountain bike is going to go from here? 